Ah uh, yes, Rugrats. We all remember Rugrats, right? The insanely successful show from 1991 which ran for 13 years across 9 seasons and had a very successful franchise spanning movies and video games and then a spin-off series where all the Rugrats grew up, yeah? And um, unfortunately a 2021 reboot and you all know what that means. But no, today I'm not here to talk about the reboot. I'm probably never going to talk about that pile of trash. Today, I'm here to talk about the comic books. That's right. So without further ado, I bring you a tale of two comic books. Back in 2017, the Rugrats got a eight series comic book um, monthly run done by boom studios and it's um it's a pretty interesting um thing going on here um boom studios did a very good job at bringing rugrats into a more modern age and de-aging it from the 90s without making it feel like it was de-aged from the 90s they use their own art style, which I like. It would be pretty hard to replicate the very unique look of the original Rugrats and have it feel genuine. So I'm glad they just went and did their own thing there. It still looks and feels very Rugrats. And all the scripting in terms of the way everyone talks, etc., their voices still live in my head very clearly. Um, the comic book franchise, unfortunately, only ran for... Less than a year. It began in October 2017 and was cancelled by May 2018. And by the end of this video overview review thing that I'm doing, you'll have a pretty clear understanding as to why. So the comic starts off in a pretty familiar setting. All the Rugrats are playing out in Tommy's backyard and their imaginations are running wild. And it's a good way to begin this comic, especially if you're like me and you haven't really paid attention to the Rugrats in a good 15 plus years. Um, the one thing that caught me out though was the parents were using their mobile phones in the background and that very quickly put this in the modern age, but it wasn't jarring or strange. It just felt natural to me. And this element actually becomes a major plot point of the story. So the story we have here is that all of the parents have got these new fancy mobile phones and baby monitoring technology through drones and hidden cameras, etc. And they're basically spending all of their time watching the kids through these phones and being distracted from what's going on in the world around them. Meanwhile, the babies are unable to have any fun anymore because the parents are able to monitor everything they're doing. So every time Tommy and the gang want to try and have some fun, they're being stopped and prevented by the parents. And it creates an interesting dynamic which Rugrats is known for. And that's the fact that, as I said before, it's mostly the parents causing a lot of reactions in the kids in this show. So... The kids are very upset because they can't play and have fun anymore because the parents have too much control over what's going on. Um, and the only person who seems to acknowledge that this is a problem is who I'm going to be calling based grandpa for the rest of this review series. And that is Lou Pickles. Lou Pickles sees the problems and complains about them openly and the fact that he didn't need mobile phones or technology when he was raising uh, the parents and they all turn out just okay so he doesn't understand and he can see the disconnect that this is causing in the world and he's not happy with it it's actually a rather hard-hitting social commentary on 2021 parenting and so tommy and the gang get together and come up with a plan to destroy all the cameras and the phones so that the parents can go back to being regular parents and they can have fun again. It's a very traditional Rugrats story and as I was reading it, this is what I would imagine a 2021 Rugrats would look like if 2021 wasn't the end of the world. And I have to appreciate what it's doing here because not only did this bring Rugrats into the modern world, but it also gave me that sense of nostalgia from a child. and. This is 
I'm I'm impressed at this point. I'll I'll leave it at that. Now with that main sort of story being over, the next issue, issue number four, um, is a one-off episode about a limited edition uh, toy, Cynthia toy coming out and the parents turning into ravenous beasts to get this limited edition toy for their kids because it's limited and there's only actually one at the toy store. Um, Tommy ends up getting his hands on the toy and he gives it to the poor girl who's never had a toy of her own, stating that everyone should have a toy of their own. It's a very humble and um, modest story, um, and, you know, it has a good moral message to it. Um, so there's no there's no issues here. It's just a single one-off episode, obviously filling space for the next three-part episode, I'm assuming. So this is where things started to get a little bit weird in volume number five lou pickles who previously in volume one two and three was against modern technology is cruising the internet reading conspiracy theories um anti-government conspiracy theories about lizard people and reptilians and things like that and he decides the best thing to do is to tell tommy all about these conspiracy theories now Stu pickles and Dee Dee pickles don't like this and don't want Tommy hearing all of Grandpa Lou's crazy conspiracy theories. And so um, Stu decides to take... <laughs> I can't believe this is actually the story. Um, so Stu decides to take Tommy to a mini golf course that has all the modern wonders of the world around it and try to teach the kids about the modern world. Meanwhile, the kids are on the hunt for lizard people and reptilians. Um, we see Lou come back into the story again when he's taking Tommy for a walk and he's pointing out that all government employees are... <laughs> all government employees are actually reptile people trying to take over the world. Um, and, the, and this whole three-part series is about the parents trying to convince Tommy and the other kids, even though they're only like one and two years old, that these conspiracy theories aren't true and to trust science and trust the government and the TV. It's a quite a bizarre story for Rugrats in general. And it's quite just a ridiculous story overall. I have no idea why they went this direction. We just had four chapters that were actually very sort of wholesome and fun. And now we have a weird conspiracy theory story. So... What ends up happening from this is Tommy and the gang believe that Angelica is a lizard person and they decide they need to try and prove it. So they start walking around filming her actions on a camera. And what's weird is they have Lou Pickles actually agreeing with the babies that Angelica is a lizard person. And at this point, I'm lost. I have no idea what is going on with this book and how it took such a weird turn and what it's trying to prove. There's also a weird scene where Angelica goes all literally like it's a Neil deGrasse Tyson um, like inspired uh, setting where she tries to teach the babies about diversity through alien metaphors. And I'm just baffled. Like, why is this? How did we go from four solid Rugrats comics that feel like Rugrats episodes to preaching government can like anti-government conspiracy theories and diversity through aliens i just have no idea what happened in these three chapters it's really baffling to me now this is where i think the writers got must have been told to rein it back in because the next chapter and this is the eighth chapter is a very episodic Rugrats chapter where Angelica extorts Phil and Lil into making and selling mud pies, which are pies, if you're familiar with the show, they're pies made out of mud, worms and grass and insects and stuff. And so Phil and Lil are making these mud pies so that Angelica can sell them to the other babies in the neighborhood because they like to eat these things because she needs money to buy a new video game. Now, she realizes that she can get twice as many pies made if she puts the two, bleh, if she pits the twins against each other. Um, and so she starts sabotaging both of their efforts. Eventually, a giant mud war breaks out in the neighborhood. Um, 
and um, Phil and Lil realize that they shouldn't be fighting each other and then that, um, you know, in the end they both make good pies and that Angelica was just uh, playing with them. Um, Angelica's dad comes out and sees the chaos and yells at Angelica and takes the money she made from selling the mud pies in order to pay to repair the damages. And that's the end of this franchise. Now it's quite clear to me, or at least this is my theory, is that by the time people who were invested in this with the first four, and then they went and bought five, six, and seven, those preachy messages, in my opinion, killed this comic franchise. What well, could have been a really fun, wholesome, funny, interesting comic book franchise to get people into Rugrats again and revitalize the show for a modern audience. And you could have easily made a modern cartoon off the first four and the eighth comic. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people who were giving this a go were turned off at that point and the whole thing just got cancelled. I mean, it survived for less than a year. And it's really devastating because what we have now is awful. And it's such a shame because I was having a lot of fun with this comic book and to have this sort of weird chapter in the middle just mar the whole experience and sort of taint what Rugrats is meant to be is just bizarre to me. And that is my tale of the Rugrats comic books and why they're so short-lived. If you're a fan of this or you've got young children and you want to introduce them to Rugrats and you can't find the original episodes, maybe just the first three issues. I mean, that's all I can ever find at my local comic book shops anyway is the first three issues. It uh, seems very hard to get the ones after that. Um, but maybe just give them those and that should be enough um, to get them into it. And then hopefully you found a copy of the original series by then. I know you can still buy it on DVD. Um, so yeah, but that's that. How bizarre.